Hi, Andreas from Total here. And um, we often talk about how Total is built in Total. And we get a lot of questions about that because what does that actually mean? Like how we, how can you build a tool in itself? How does that even work, right? And the thing is, this is not actually that uncommon in the programming world. There's quite It's quite common for programming language to actually write their compiler. So compiler is the program that takes your raw source code that you've written and turns it into a program that the computer can execute. Um, it's quite common for that compiler to be written in the language itself. Um, and what we're doing really with Toddle is essentially carrying that tradition on, right? And it's sort of a test of the complexity and the, the strength of a language, and in this case also a no-code tool, that you're capable to build some of the most complex uh, programs. And, and compilers are immensely complex programs, just like the Toddle editor is a very, very complex uh, project. I believe it's probably the most complex no-code project anyone has built. Uh, at least I'm not aware of anything that that at that is at the same level um i would love to learn so if you know about any project that is uh, of this complexity that's built with no code please leave a comment i would love to learn about it. so um i'm here in total um and i've got all my projects and i've i've got a lot because obviously i've been using total for quite a while uh, but the one we care about here is just the one called total um so i'll go and open that and I've got a demo branch I'm going to edit in this case, right? <laughs> and so the first thing we'll load here, the first thing we'll see is we're going to load our website because obviously the Toddle website is built in Toddle. That's not a big surprise. It says so on it, right? Um, and I think almost every no-code builder, almost every web builder there is out there from Webflow to... Um, yeah, I mean, all of them, I think, are building their own website in the tool because it, it just makes sense. And it's not that complex to do, right? It's usually well within the scope of what, what a, what a no-code uh, web builder should be able to do, right? Um, and that's that's also why we do it in Total. Um, even though Total is kind of meant for more complex use cases, uh, obviously, it handles a website really well. Um now, where it gets a bit more complex is that we can see here, if we go and over open our uh, component editor. So this component is responsible for basically rendering the whole total editor for editing components or pages, right? So that's why we have this sort of weird, um, what's it called? Like nested viewer, we're basically seeing the same items show up. Like we've got our, our our left panel over here and then we've got the actual left panel in here and we've got the same with the element panel if we just select the normal element we, we're basically seeing this sort of a uh, very duplicate view um and and we did actually have an early problem where the default component the inner one would load uh would be the component editor which then resulted in a <laughs> like a <laughs> infinite regression inwards of it just loading itself until eventually it crashed so We've actually had to add a lot of uh, safeguards into the editor, uh, well, specifically into the total project that prevents like these uh, issues that arise when you're building an application in itself, um, which is very total specific. It's very specific to total. You don't see that with any other project. Um, I can actually show it here with the editor page. Um, so here we have this connection lost uh, model always showing on this page and the reason for that is because uh, otherwise it would essentially try to establish two connections to the back end one for the actual total editor and one for the version we were currently working on and the version we we're currently working on could potentially start trying to overwrite some of the data that we we were working like we, we, we're building right and so we didn't we don't really want that so we sort of blocked it from making that connection when it's running inside the editor this is some of the fun headaches you have when you when you go down the path of like building your no-code tool and your no-code tool. But on the flip side, it really allows us to move at a speed that is unlike anything that's really possible otherwise. Like given a, a relatively, we're a relatively small team and we're capable of moving at speeds that really wasn't possible without no-code, uh, without a no-code tool like this, right? So the editor page, the one I'm showing you here, 
is the page that gets loaded. It's the outermost page that gets loaded uh, when you're opening Toddle. Um, and we've got all these sort of like different editors inside it. So we've got one for the component editor. This is responsible for uh, loading uh, pages and components. We've got the theme editor for editing your project theme. We've got this code editor, which is loaded both when you're editing custom actions and custom formulas. There you have like a little JavaScript uh, editor where you can go and write your own actions and formulas for Toddle. And then finally, we have the project sidebar. And you can actually see that here um, on the side, right? Uh, behind the, the modal. And that's the same one we've got out here. Uh, so let's dive into the component editor because I think that's the most interesting part, right? This is where you're editing your pages and components. And the reason why we're actually able to build something of the complexity of Total, like this editor, because this is a very, very complex app, right? There's a lot, there's a, I don't even know how many variables, formulas, workflows we have here. We don't have that count. Um, because it, it really isn't manageable to have in any single place, right? Um, we are probably talking hundreds, maybe thousands of variables, workflows, different states, um, because there's so many layers. But the reason why we can actually even work with that, why it's even possible humanly to reason about that level of complexity is because Total have this very powerful component system that lets you break your application down into small manageable pieces uh, that you're then able to work with independently. Um, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So right here, we've got the component editor, which is kind of rendering the whole editor, like everything inside the editor you can see for rendering con component, uh, for editing components or pages, is rendered on the screen through this component. With the exception you can see here on the left is of the uh, side panel here. This is actually a separate component on the editor page, right? But everything else here, the left panel, the canvas, uh, the element panel, um, as well as like uh, component panels, etc. You can see them a little bit outside the screen here. Uh, all these different panels that, that we're showing is all like children or descendants of this one component editor. So this is an immensely complex component. You can see it's got a ton of attributes, lots of variables, lots of events it possibly can emit uh, for different changes and a lot of different complex formulas that it's doing here. Um, but this is nothing compared to the amount of complexity this component actually handles. And it's capable of doing that because we can dive further down. So let's say uh, here when we select an element, we've got our element panel on the right, this big block over here, right? And that's the same thing we're seeing inside our app here. So if I double click on this, uh, we can sort of look at what does that component look like? And you can see this is now just a little part of our component editor. So this doesn't have all the same information that the large component editor does. It doesn't have all the same responsibility, if you will. All it needs to do is given that you've selected an element, it needs to show this panel for that. And this is furtherly, so it doesn't need to know anything about all your different kind of files. It doesn't need to figure out what kind of nodes are available inside the component. We've got one selected node, and that selected node has uh, some information, right? And we can sort of start dive further in. We've got the style panel, which is part of this. We've got the three tabs, of course, but inside the styling tab, we even have the style panel. Um, and if I dive into that, we'll see this is just, sort of, we select one here. This is just this part of the uh, panel, right? So all this component does is we give it in this style object here as a attribute. And we tell this component, here's some style information. I want you to render that style information out into this panel. And whenever a user makes a change to any one of these properties, I want you to emit this style change event. And then whatever parent component is using this, is gonna be notified that actually the user changed the style. And that parent component can then take that information and update the selected node with that select new style information. And then the parent component of that will eventually update the whole component. So we're constantly breaking down like our complex application into smaller and smaller bits that uh, handle smaller and smaller areas 
Like they get more and more specialized. And that's why we're capable of building something that are incredibly complex because we keep breaking it down into smaller pieces that we can actually manage. Um, and so we can we can keep going here. We can say, oh, well, our size styles is actually uh, a separate component itself inside this uh, the, the style panel. And even inside this, we're seeing a ton of components here. We're seeing something for like the tooltip. I think we can see that. Uh, this little tooltip is its own component uh, right here. We've got the style dialog, which is essentially a component for opening and showing these extended uh, draggable dialogues uh, that pop out next to it. And of course, we've got something like our unit input here. So this component is just responsible for rendering this this input right here. And they're all actually unit inputs here. Uh, and it's a type of input that deals with like a specifically lengths, like whenever you're saying like width, height, min height, padding, margin, all these are distances. And uh, we have a certain amount of like, we have certain things we can do with that. So if we take the section, like I can say, for example, 100, and it'll automatically add pixels. This component know that if I'm just saying 100, I mean pixels. If I'm pressing arrow up and down, I can add uh, I can I can sort of increase decrease these things right, and all that logic, all this like listening for the key events and handling that correct is all baked into this unit input component, and because we can encapsulate that inside a component, I don't need to think about that logic when I'm figuring out how to do margin styles right, because that there I can think about well there's basically a top bottom left and right margin how. I need four inputs for that. Okay, or maybe I, in, in the case of padding, we're actually doing two and setting two of them at the same time, right? So I get to work at sort of different levels of detail, which is why it's possible to build a complex application. I've got a simple unit input, and then I take that that has one responsibility. It owns one little bitty tiny part of the application. And I combine that with other components that own their little bit of the application. And then they get combined into a bigger component that then gets combined with other components that each own their part. And that way we can sort of structure this big hierarchy of components um, that actually means it's possible to build something of, of almost infinite complexity. Really. Obviously, there, there are human limits, right? But you can build something as complex as the total editor. Uh, I think another uh, good example is our formula dialogue here. Um, so whenever you're editing a formula in Total, um, we'll just go and add one here, right? So whenever you're here uh, editing a formula in Total, and you can select all the different URL params or branches or variables or whatever, so it, and you can build these like um, complex formulas, complex logic you can build in the in the Total formula, is all right. Uh, we'll just actually delete that because we don't need that in there. That is this component uh, right here. Um, and again, everything inside this now right here, we've got you, you can see this is live if we go into test mode, I can like space drag this around. Um, and this again, exactly the same thing as before everything you're seeing on screen is all these components that are nested that are combined into more complex component, again, combined into more complex component. Uh, so if I dive into my formula canvas, canvas here, we can actually see like we have a formula node that is just a specific node inside a formula. Um, we've got our whole canvas here that sits inside that dialog. That actually, so we keep building these complex um, parts of the system by constantly building small components that understand their role in the bigger system and, and does one job really, really well. or in a no-go tool um, and how specifically Toddles Design and, and our component system allow you to deal with uh, incredible level of complexities uh, but allows you to architect your application um, and actually break down the complexity into smaller, more manageable parts. Right? Um, obviously, I don't expect anyone to understand how the editor works from this video. Uh, the point of the video is more to showcase what level of, of complexity, how this is even really possible uh, to be built in no-code tool. Um, 
when we have new people joining Total, uh, obviously there's an onboarding process and understanding you kind of get more of a, of a intro into it. It's not a 15 minute video. Uh, and then we say go, right? Um, um, but I hope you got the base, basic idea of what the, the main part is that actually enables this kind of tool to be built in a no-code tool. Um, if you haven't tried Total yet, uh, go and sign up. It's free. Give it a try. It's 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 pretty easy to get started, especially if you've built in a no-code tool like Webflow, WeWeb, something like that before. Um, it should feel very familiar. There's obviously new content, and we've got a lot of really good uh, or new new um, concepts in Total that that are different from other tools. We've got some really good videos here on YouTube. Uh, that'll teach you how to start building applications in total. So I recommend you subscribe and, and check them out. Um, and uh, if you're familiar, if you have any questions for this video, please add them in the comments. Uh, we, we love to hear it. Um, and if you're familiar with the no-code tool that are uh, more complex or as complex as, as what we build in total, we would actually love to know about it. Because to our knowledge, I think total is the most complex no-code application ever built. Um, but obviously we would love to learn if, what, what other apps are out there. Um, yeah, so yeah, like and subscribe and, and try out Toddle. Come join the Discord community. We've got so many great people there helping uh, beginners out, answering questions all the time. It's really a good, it's a great place to hang out. It's a great place to learn about how to use Toddle. Um, and thank you very much for watching.